Pelago Bioscience. Yes, there you are. Welcome to Thank the stage. You. How CETSA can improve targeted drug discovery. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Good afternoon. My name is Michael Dabrowski. I'm the CEO of Pelago Bioscience. <coughs> and I'm going to talk about how CETSA, um, not just the abbreviation, but the method CETSA can improve targeted drug discovery. Um, Targeted drug discovery, I spoke about this last year as well, is in theory quite a simple feat to accomplish. Uh, namely, you just need the right target, the right drug, and the right patient. So it's only three errors at the same time. Uh, in reality, it's a quite daunting task, and it's a task that we fail uh, way too often, and quite often based on efficacy. So um, the, the argument that I made last year was that if we focus on target engagement, we can revert some of these failures into uh, efficacy successes because target engagement obviously is central to a targeted drug discovery approach, all the way from target selection through the development of your drug and into uh, clinical trials. And it's also central to do the back translation back into the lab and develop new and even better drugs. If you don't know how hard you hit the target in the clinic, you haven't really learned anything and you have no new starting points when you go back into the lab to make better drugs. So target engagement is central to targeted drug discovery. And target engagement is what Pelago Bioscience measures day in and day out. We do this with the uh, SETSA method, which stands for the Cellular Thermal Shift Assay. And that assay takes advantage of the fact uh, that when you heat a sample with proteins in it, the proteins will unfold and precipitate. Now, <clears throat> if you bind a drug to a protein, then that precipitation or melting temperature will change. So by measuring the protein thermal stability in the presence and in the absence of drug, you can, by monitoring that temperature delta or that temperature change, quantify the target engagement or the drug target engagement. And because it's a biophysical principle, it happens every time you boil an egg, um, you can do this in any sample matrix, any physiological sam relevant sample matrix, being a cell or being a tissue samples from, from man or mice, um, which makes our data very physiological relevant because you simply get the answer, is my drug hitting the target or not in my sample matrix? So, obviously, this has found a lot of utility in, in drug discovery. Uh, throughout the value chain, I should say, from the very early start uh, into the lead optimization and also into, into the clinic. And, of course, the, the value increases as you move along the, uh, the value chain and, and your investments in your project increases. So, <coughs> value is, is also something that we have generated now uh, with and, and for our customers. The method is, is now sub-licensed to Pfizer, to Merck, to GSK, and actually a few more companies. Um, we have initiated a two-year strategic collaboration with AstraZeneca to, to benchmark our method to existing methods and use their annotated drug collections uh, to see uh, how good are the legs of the SETSA method. Uh, and so far, we're walking just fine. Um, seven out of, of ten pharma companies are customers, which is also proof of the generic utility of the method that it's such a widespread uptake in, in less than three years in the public domain. Um, there's a small R after SETSA now, which means that it's a registered trademark, and it's also patented uh, both in Europe, US, China, and Singapore, and, and several other territories are pending. So, so value, yes, value is created for our customers, hopefully. But what we want to do now is create value uh, for patients. And the idea is that we use this method to identify, validate, and develop biomarkers, and in the future also move into diagnostics. Um, <coughs> biomarkers. There was a study of about 1,000 oncology drugs that entered into clinical trials. If your program had no biomarker, the overall chance of success of being registered as a drug at the other end was 6%. That's not a lot. From the programs that did have a biomarker, 
that number was 24. So four times higher chance of success with a validated biomarker. And in the subset that was on non-small cell lung cancer, that's quite a feat to say, non-small lung cell cancer, uh, yeah, um, it was six times higher than, than the base um, uh, chance of success, 62%. Um, as opposed to 11% without a biomarker. So biomarker is clearly a facilitating thing to have when you enter into development. Um, development of what? Well, a targeted drug. This is uh, just the RAS-RAF pathway. Um, you don't need to, to, to look at the picture other than realize that there's a lot of targets in here. Uh, where to start? Uh, what is my drug hitting? What is it doing when it enters uh, the cell? Don't worry. This is what we do every day. We measure target engagement. We quantify how much of your drug is hitting which target. Uh, and we've done that uh, hundreds of times. Um, but we also have another format of the method where you can take a single drug and ask the question, of the thousands of targets in that cell, which targets am, is my drug hitting? So. Instead of detecting a single target, we detect all targets in that sample matrix. Five, six, seven, eight thousand targets quantified at the same time, and the few targets that are moving in this assays, those are your direct molecular hits. Those are your targets. Um, so back, back to this pathway, you have your PDK inhibitor, and we validate that, yes, you are hitting PDK. Uh, but we can also, in the same experiment, see downstream phosphorylations, dimerizations, etc. So we can see and find your efficacy biomarker in this mesh of, of targets. And in fact, the whole pathway will light up in this experiment. Um, so therefore, you can now couple your molecular target to the pathway, and by matching that with your efficacy data, you have a good predictive biomarker identified somewhere if it can't be your target. If you start validating that towards the outcome measures, then you're converting your powerful predictive biomarker into an even more powerful tool, namely a diagnostic uh, format. So this is what we want to do more, because there's a lot of good drugs out there which could be used probably even better than they are today. So by profiling what they really do in cells and tissue, uh, we hope to be able to uh, identify biomarkers and hopefully also uh, no new um, in vitro diagnostic formats. We've started with a grant from Sui Life financed by, by Vinova just in breast cancer. But you can see an and question mark there. And that is, uh, that is someone, hopefully in the audience, um, that can help us zoom in on the clinical relevant sample formats uh, areas of the biggest unmet need, where is, where is it that we need to go next, where is it that, that we need to look to get us back on track in, in this quite simple uh, feat of, of doing targeted drug discovery on the right target with the right drug and the right patient. So with that, I am uh, 20 seconds over time uh, and I thank you for your extra attention. <laughs>